Welcome back to Real Talk About Feminism podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today. Welcome, everyone. It's episode 65. I'm really excited about this episode because, for one, like I love when I get really into a topic and I just can't stop researching it, and that's how this one was for me. And I'm not sure if you've ever really heard about this. Yeah, so I haven't actually looked at the show notes at all. Okay. Because I want to be surprised. Okay. So I'm going to be learning right along with everyone else. And I'm really excited. All right. I will just take the lead on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything going on, really? I have been dying in one of my classes. I feel like I spend so much time doing homework. It's insane. It's the hardest class I've ever taken. What class is it? It is uh, internal web development. And it's 100% coding. I think it's really cool that you can code. Like, let's just take a minute to really appreciate all of the education, everything that you learn in this Mm -hmm. class. Like, seriously, she has coded websites from scratch. Okay, okay. Let's not get overzealous here. You have. No, no, no. Even if it's basic, you have. I know. I really do appreciate it. Um, It is extremely basic. It's just basic HTML and CSS. Okay, but, like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it, yeah, so it's very basic. But the thing is, like, I'm extremely proud of myself. Am I spending hours on basic assignments? Yes. Am I getting tutoring once a week? Yes. But I am so proud of myself because I genuinely, whenever I'm doing homework, I in my head, it's just playing a woman in STEM. <laughs> Like I know seriously it. though. Seriously. I love it. I feel so okay. I just dropped my phone. Um I feel so accomplished, even if it is a basic assignment. Like if I pull a B in this class, I'm gonna be really proud of myself. Yeah, but honestly, like you'll know that you did your best. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter what grade, honestly, like you're spending hours on this. And also, even though you're saying it's basic, like you could figure things out. You could watch a video and like pretty much understand what's going on yeah and you also helped me with this project that I'm working on too like you literally can code you're a coding girl (laughs) (laughs) very basic and it is confusing but the thing is like I feel like once you learn the basics then you can literally just look up like what is the code for this like to change this or whatever like and so nobody if you need help with anything do not hit me up because I'm not on that level yet but I can do a little basic amount and it is really a good feeling. So that's so cool. I think you, you made a really good choice with your major. Because mm-hmm. I remember when you changed, I don't know when it was, but like you were like, I don't know what to do. But like the one you picked, what, what do you make your name? Entrepreneurship and oh, digital yeah, yeah. marketing. Okay. I think that's really good for one, for your job. Mm-hmm. And two, I just think it's really useful. Yeah. It is actually because all of my classes this semester, so this web design class is, um, half the semester so it's Mm -hmm. super accelerated Mm -hmm. so that's the other reason why the class is so hard because it's 14 weeks pushed into seven weeks so Mm -hmm. it's actually weeks yeah it's week six right now so I have my final website due next week um and um anyways what was I saying okay yeah so the the classes I'm taking this semester are social innovation for businesses and small business creation and this web design class and they're just really really interesting like they're honestly really hard because for the business class I'm doing right now it's like financials and all this stuff and it's extremely difficult but it's really rewarding and I've never felt like this in school before like I've been working so hard and it feels really good like you know it's going to help you in life and not just like a math class that you're never going to use like that's probably a really good feeling right I was just going to say it's not like an anatomy class that you just take the test and then you don't have to use it again but <laughs> oops, uh, yeah, you actually should but I'm glad you made a career choice <laughs> yeah career change yeah. yeah anyway so yeah that's what's been going on for me okay I just started my first class of the summer so I'm only taking three they're all online and this class that I started goes from end of May to like end of July and all my other classes will end like four weeks later Mm -hmm. um but the nice thing is that there's no textbooks required because it's supposed to be like a super accessible course Mm -hmm. and there's no due dates everything is due on the last day of class the final 
the two exams, mm-hmm. all the modules, all the discussions, all the quizzes, everything's due. So it's like really self-paced. I would not like that. I hate it. Okay, I thought you were going to say you like no, it. No, I hate it because yeah. I love structure. Yeah. I love a tight ship. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it's really difficult so far. I haven't done anything because I don't have to. Uh, I feel like that's extremely dangerous. It's really dangerous. Especially because we've talked about this a little bit. I used to be a procrastinator and I am not anymore. I'm actually like really on top of things. Mm -hmm. You procrastinate a lot. Yeah, we've really switched. Mm -hmm. Because I've realized like, here's the thing. I'm going to graduate. Of course, I'm trying my hardest. But I also have realized like all of my years spent in high school and all the time and blood sweat and tears I put into like all these honor and AP classes that honestly I don't I didn't really need looking back at it Mm -hmm. I don't have to break my back over this Mm -hmm. you know like I'm gonna graduate I'll be fine right so it has been kind of freeing in that aspect C's get degrees C's get degrees (laughs) just kidding family if you're listening I mean it's true though like I'm going to graduate I don't I have a very high standard for myself still but, like, I have let myself loose a little okay, bit. Okay, yeah. Ken's letting herself loose is still an extremely <laughs> high GPA. The other day she was like, and she wasn't being mean or anything, but the other day Ken was like, I have really let myself go. My GPA <laughs> is whatever it was. And I was like, really? Because mine is this. Or I'll just say it. Mine is 3.2. And um, <laughs> so it's a lot lower than normal, but whatever. But here's the thing. You're trying your hardest. You just said that. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. No, I am I am trying really hard. And my GPA got really low when I got at a really low point in my life. Exactly. It's like there's so many things going on. Uh-huh. Like if school needs to be on the back burner for a minute, and that's fine. <laughs> that's how I kind of feel about it. Like I've kind of discovered that, you know, when you're in college, you're working, you're an adult, so you're like you're trying to figure yes, things out. Yes, you're trying to figure your life out. You have real life things going on. And so, you know, you, I don't know, I'm not going to say that you can't prioritize it, but like, it's okay. Like I'm not beating myself up realizing that my GPA is not as high as I want it to be, but I'm, I had life going on and everyone experiences that. So like, you don't have to have a perfect 4.0 GPA to still be smart and educated and driven. Exactly. And in my opinion, it's like, um, I think it's amazing when people graduate with like high honors or like valedictorian, like that is such a huge accomplishment, but like. For me, I'm just not there mm-hmm. in my life right now. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. There's, I'm going to graduate. Uh, yeah. yeah. I will get a good job yeah. regardless, you know? Are you, so you're going to walk, right? Yeah. So I graduate this December mm-hmm. and then I'll have to walk in May. May. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, are, do you get to decorate your cap? I don't know. Should I, if I can? Uh, you 100% should. Okay. You should put the, a big QR code for the podcast. <laughs> I, should, I should do that. I should say, um, oh, I can't think of anything clever. I'm not clever, but that would be so funny. No, you should actually do something really cute, though. I should. Because I've been seeing everyone's grad pictures, mm-hmm. and there are some people with the cutest cats. Really cute. You know, but also, I'm very, like, traditional, where, like, I kind of just want I don't know if I can decorate mine when I graduate wherever I graduate from then I'm decorating it I will take pictures grad pictures before I decorate it yeah I think a lot of people do yeah for sure well one other thing that we have going on is that we're going to New York yeah we're really excited it's gonna be a short little trip for us Mm -hmm. we're flying in Sunday so today technically yeah technically um and then we're leaving Wednesday but Wednesday night. Yeah, so Wednesday we basically night. have like three and a half days. Yeah, so it's actually, I think it's a good amount of time. And also, mm-hmm. like, we're not going to be there for a week. So, like, it'll be cheaper than if we yeah, were You know, it. like, there's a lot more potential of saving a little bit. Okay, what is your obsession of the week? My obsession this week is my new phone case. It's very cute. It's very hot pink. Yeah, if you guys are watching on YouTube, I'm holding it up right now. So, it was $5. Where'd you get it? Five below? H&M. H&M. Cute. I know. They have really cute accessories. That's really cute. Yeah. Yeah, H&M is good. Yeah, they're really good. So that's my obsession. What's yours? Mine is the song Payday by Doja Cat. Mm -hmm. I've heard it a million times, but, like, for some reason, 
I was listening to it one time this week, and I, like, can't stop listening to it. I love that. I love when that happens, when a song just, like, won't get old. Yeah. It it's hasn't so yet. Yeah. Okay, as Haley said, I am taking the lead on this one, because she has not even a peek in the show notes. No. Um, today is June 19th, and it's Juneteenth, and so instead of discussing a feminist highlight, we're going to just briefly talk about Juneteenth, because it's really, really important. Juneteenth, as I said, is June 19th, every single year. Um, It finally became a national holiday on June 17th of 2021. So it has only been a national holiday for a year. Yeah. Juneteenth honors the end of slavery in America. Even after the Emancipation Proclamation was set into effect and the Emancipation said that slavery was over, um, even though it went into effect, slavery still carried on in Texas. And until June 19th of 1865, there was, there was still slavery in Texas. Mm -hmm. And so this day marks when it was banned in Texas and therefore the whole country. Yeah. So it's a really important holiday and I'm really glad it's a national holiday. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know a lot of people have been pushing for that for many years. Yeah. It is really important to recognize, like we always say with different holidays and recognition days. It's important to educate ourselves um, and just be supportive and, you know, lend a helping hand, donate, do what we can to listen to other people's stories and be good allies to people and listen to their experiences. Yeah. And I think especially for Juneteenth, like, I feel like a lot of people in this country try and forget that slavery happened, even though it's a very big piece of our history. And so I think it's a really good thing that we have this to celebrate, like, that it's no longer there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. To celebrate that and recognize that there are still inequalities and mm-hmm. we still need There's to There's a lot fighting. of work we have to do still. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It, Juneteenth is a really important holiday. Sad to think that it's only been a, officially a holiday for one year, but we have to start somewhere. And so we're going to celebrate today. Happy Juneteenth. Happy and happy Juneteenth. Pride again. Yes. <laughs> June is just a busy month. It really is. Let's get into the episode. I'm so excited to hear everything. Okay. I'm going to start just by asking you if you've heard of the Riot Girl Movement. No. Okay. Like, never. I've never. Okay. So, I got this topic idea from this book that we checked out at the library. It's called The Feminism Book. And it's really cute. Where is it? It's somewhere near it's here. It's upstairs. Okay, we'll take a picture of it and put it on the story because it is a really good resource, I feel like, for, like, a lot of feminist issues. It's the feminist Bible. Honestly. Yeah, we were at the library and we were like, we have to get this. Mm-hmm. I honestly might buy it. It's really good. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I don't want to have to keep renewing it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the Riot Girl Movement, and it's Riot and then G-R-R-R-L. So it's, like, girl. girl. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this movement was a feminist punk movement in the 90s. Ooh. Yeah, so, like, we've never talked about this either. Yeah. I'm excited. Some say that this actually started the third wave of feminism. It started in the Pacific Northwest in the U.S., and it began when a group of women met to discuss how to address sexism in the punk scene, because this was a very male-dominated field. Mm-hmm. Would you say it still is? I'm, I'm not really into punk, but... What classifies as punk? I'm thinking like Avril Lavigne. Is that punk? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I would say it is male dominated, but I'm not educated. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) According to skilledpapers.com, these musicians um, that were female, they all felt like they didn't have the same freedom to express themselves as male musicians. So like, especially, I'm not going to speak to like the punk scene today, but in this time it was extremely male dominated. Yeah, which I can see. Yeah. In this meeting, they decided that they would start a, quote, girl riot. And they actually Mm -hmm. specifically made it G-R-R-R-L riot to sound like a grr sound. It's like girl. 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 Why am I doing that? (laughs) Girl. And in addition to, like, it sounding like that, it also represents their anger and frustration. Okay. Yeah. The grr? The grr. 
Yeah. I love that. Right. We love, a, we love some double meaning. I know. I love it because they just were so like fed up with feeling this way. They were like, we just need to do something about it. Yeah. This movement also expanded to a lot of other countries. So it started very small in America and ex- expanded to a lot of other countries. I read a couple sources that said like 24 to 26 other countries. Okay. So it was like a global movement. But you said it started in America? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, in Oregon specifically. Wow, okay. Our birthplace. Our birthplace. <laughs> it's a fever dream that we were born in Oregon. I know, but I love saying it because you think of Oregon and it's like so gorgeous pretty. and pretty and nobody needs to know that we were born in the tiny town that I don't even know what it looks like because I don't remember. There, but <laughs> yeah. A subculture also came about from this Riot Girl movement in which some bands in the punk scene focus their music more on information and disseminating political ideas. Hmm. So it was more focused on the lyrics and like getting points and opinions across that were really important and that honestly like weren't really talked about Mm -hmm. back then. Which in like music can get political. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of artists that try and portray a message or Mm -hmm. share a message through their music and it's powerful because it gets ingrained into people's heads. Yeah. So, and it's also a really cool way for them to express themselves. Yeah, because it is art. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that it's, like, poetry. Yeah. And so I think that's awesome. Yeah, I agree. And when I was researching this, I was thinking of a conversation that we were having with Mom the other day about free bleeding, actually. Mm. And she was like, we didn't talk about this kind of stuff when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And, like, she... She was, like, she was a young adult in the 90s, and so it was just interesting, because, like, I want to ask her, like, if music she listened to before this had messages like that. Yeah. You know, it's just really interesting, or, like, if she remembers this, or was a fan of them. Yeah. You know, I'm just really curious about it. Well, this isn't punk rock, I don't think. Um, but no doubt we were when we were listening yeah. to No Doubt the other day. Yeah. And we were talking about the symbolism of the tragic kingdom cover. Uh-huh. Um, and so that like I don't know. Yeah. There's obviously other messages that are being portrayed, not necessarily in in punk rock, but it's just a, a demonstration of how messages are portrayed in music. Yeah, that's really cool. Some of the messages that these bands focus on were homophobia, racism, sexual abuse, eating disorders, and other important topics, like, that I mentioned probably weren't really talked about, especially in music. Yeah, those are, like, really important topics that I would not have expected them to cover. But they are very important ones, and feminist topics, Uh you know, like, we've talked about all of those. Mm -hmm. The feminism book that I mentioned before says that the band's Bratmobile and Bikini Kill were mainly linked to the movement. According to the New York Public Library.org, Heavens to Betsy was also a major band linked to the movement. And I will get into a few key figures who were in these bands as well. A huge aspect of the Riot Girl movement were also fanzines, or sometimes they were shortened to zines. Okay. And they were basically like handmade fan magazines. And in addition to, like, political ideas being in the song lyrics, they were also spread through these. So, like, they would make a ton of copies. They would go to these community gatherings. Like, they would perform and, like, hand them out. So, kind of like a um, political pamphlet type thing? Yeah. What are, yeah there, there's idea. a lot of those in history. There's a lot of those. Yeah. And the artwork on them is really cool. I spent a lot of time going through and looking at pictures of them. So we'll definitely be posting some. Yeah, we'll post on the story. The Riot Girl movement also had a manifesto that was created. And in some of the zines, the manifesto was also printed. <laughs> For a second, zines. I forgot it was zines. And I was like, you mean scenes? You mean scenes? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, but a section of the manifesto is, quote, us girls crave records and books and fanzines that speak to us that we feel included in and can understand in our own ways. I love that. Another one said, because, that's in all caps, because we are angry at a society that tells us girl equals dumb, girl equals bad, girl equals weak. So these were two sections from their manifesto. Like, I think that's a really good, those are really good quotes to see, like, why they started the movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. 
really great messages just out there about it. Yeah. And another thing I'll add is I think it's really cool about this is still talked about today because it obviously had so much influence in the nineties, but like that, this is 2030. I had to take a brain break. 20, 30 years later. Oh, I thought you were saying it was 2030. And I was like, bestie, <laughs> bestie, you are not right. Yeah, no, it's multiple years later that we're still talking about it. And honestly, I could see this happening again. Yeah, I could too. I feel like it has happened in ways. Mm-hmm. Okay, this just came to my mind. We love Billie Eilish. And especially in her new album, she talks a lot about Like, not this my kind responsibility. Not my responsibility, your power. Mm-hmm. Like, she just has messages in her songs that are really important. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Billy. Billy. Our girl. Come on the pod, Billy. Please Billy, come me. on the podcast. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there were a few key figures in this movement, as I mentioned. Jen Smith, she was the one who is credited with coining the term uh, Riot Girl, specifically, like, the G-R-R-L. Okay. She was also a member of the band Bratmobile. Allison Wolf was the lead singer of Bratmobile, so Jen and Allison were bandmates. And Molly Newman, she was the drummer of Bratmobile. Okay. And I also found a really interesting article that I'm going to pull a quote from. Um, she also is quoted as saying, we're not anti-boy, we're pro-girl. And I just love that. Because it's like, we don't hate men. Like, we mm-hmm. just want to lift up women. Yeah, and that's what we talk about all the time, too. Yeah, that's exactly what we talk about. We should, like, blast for that in our <laughs> studio yeah, or something. Yeah, we should. <laughs> this interview Molly did was with Washington Square News on May 4th of this year. So, very recently. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she talked about how she got into the Riot Girl movement. She said, quote, Riot Girl was very loosely organized. I would even say unorganized. It wasn't meant to be a specific movement, per se. In our youthful energy, one of our friends sent us a postcard saying that we were going to have a girl riot this summer. We were all going to, to converge in Washington, D.C., our band and our friends Bikini Kill. So these two bands were friends. Okay. So basically she was just saying, like, it, they didn't ever intend for it to be, like, this huge movement that was mm-hmm. so influential. She continued and said, we converged in D.C. and collectively tried to find something to do. We made a fanzine and called it Riot Girl. And we pass it out at shows to say, let's get together. We're all going to be here for the summer. Let's have a meeting. Hmm. There, was this in, there was this inherent connection between activism, punk, and community. From there, it became its own thing. I think I went to a couple of meetings. Ultimately, that was it. It was an idea conceptually that people found an affinity for. And so Riot Girl became its own organic movement. It became a self-sustaining community. Oh. So they didn't intend to create this huge thing, but they did. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think it goes to show that you can start something from anything. Yeah, just from exactly. the smallest seed of an idea. Just, like, wanting to get together with friends and promote, like, girl power. Exactly. And it can turn into this whole movement. I love that. It's so cool. Yeah, um, there's a few of them, like, the original pioneers of this movement that are still very active wow. in the music industry and, like, the political industry mm-hmm. as well. It would be so cool if this to summer, have one of them, or yeah, to have one of them on. But if this summer there was like a Riot Girl music festival, I think there are things like that. That would be so that fun. But like, if cool. it was the originals that performed, that would be so cool. Like a reunion oh, show. I would that totally would be so cool. see that. Yeah, we would have to go. That'd be awesome. Another pioneer of the Riot Girl movement was Kathleen Hanna, and she formed the band Bikini Kill in 1990 with drummer Toby Bale. And they also had one male in the band. His name is Billy Karen, and he was their guitarist. Bikini Kill liked to center their shows around women and would actually have the women be at the front of the venue and the men in the back. Like, they would literally bring the women to the front oh and be, gosh. like, right at the stage. Um, that makes me think of 10 Things I Hate About You as well. Yes! <laughs> oh, I love that. An interesting fact about Kathleen is that while she was studying photography at Evergreen State College in Oregon, she actually worked as a counselor at a domestic violence and rape shelter. And she also loved to perform spoken word poetry on feminist themes. And Kathy Acker, who is actually a feminist poet, she actually suggested to Kathleen that she start a band. Wow. She's like, hey, like, I love your poems. Like, you should start a band. That's so cool. Yeah. 
And then um, another one is Toby Vale, who I mentioned um, was the drummer for Bikini Kill. That is awesome. I think that's really cool that there was men in the band too, and mm-hmm. they were part of the movement because there was the band. two bands. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there was only one man. Toby Vale is a, a female. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, my bad. <laughs> that's okay. It's spelled T O B I. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that there it is cool that there was a man in the band because it anyone could be a feminist. Yes. Yeah. I do too. I think yeah. it's really cool. Awesome. Unfortunately, Riot Girl received a lot of criticisms, as expected. Yeah. Um, through the mid nineties about being too white or too watered down. And a lot of sources that I read said that bands like the Spice Girls really exemplified the term girl power, and it kind of took away from the Riot Girl movement. Mm-hmm. So that was just interesting. And um, the Spice Girls are huge, so like I yeah. could see how that would really have an effect on this like smaller movement mm-hmm. and more like alternative movement, I guess. Yeah. Um, however, a lot of the Riot Girl founders. They continue to remain politically and musically active. Um, They have influenced a lot of other female bands as well. And I also read in some sources that they have been super influential on like young musicians, especially girls. I love that. I think that that is really awesome. And it's fun to learn about something that you've never learned about before because I've never heard of that. Yeah, and it wasn't until I cracked open that book that I was like, this is really interesting. And, like, you can see how I got, like, stuck in a deep dive, basically. Yeah. There's so much information. And I just think it's really cool to talk about a movement that, like, neither of us were around for even. Right. That still has influence today. Yeah. If you guys have ever heard of the Riot Girl movement, then reach out to us. Yeah, let us know. I'm really curious because I think most of our listeners are, like, around our age. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see, like, if you've heard of it. Yeah, that would be so cool. Well, thank you for putting together that episode. So informative and just really fun to learn about. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. We will be posting some of the resources that we're referencing in the show notes and then also on our Instagram story. And something that um, I actually wanted to touch on in the beginning, but we'll touch about it on it right now, is that we have an email newsletter. And we want to start sending it out uh, next month. So subscribe to the newsletter. You can go to our website, which is listed in the show notes. Or you can just DM us your email address. But fill out the contact form on our website. And then you'll get added to the subscription list. And we want to make it very clear that this email newsletter is just for us to send out a little recap of the episode each week. We'll send it out on Sundays. So you'll get a recap of the episode and any of the sources that we discuss so that you have the links easily right there for you to reference. Yeah, we will not spam you. I know that's a huge concern with email newsletters. It really will be once a week. And it's just another way to connect with us. Like we want to get to know you guys. We want to be able to communicate with you and send you updates. Mm -hmm. So please give us your email. Yeah, definitely subscribe to that, and uh, we'll start sending those emails out in June, so just so that you're prepared. In July. Oh, yes. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We'll start sending those emails out in July. We're in June now, so to be prepared, send your email to us right now. Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram as well, at Real Talk About Feminism Pod. That is, like, our lifeline if you want to get to us. We post everything on there. We post a lot of resources and about the episodes. So definitely follow us on Instagram as well. Yes. So with that being said, go subscribe to the newsletter, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.